If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. We're going to take this question very slowly and very step by step. And the first thing that we want to note is that as the bar is sliding down the ramp, there is going to be what is known as an induced EMF. The value of the induced EMF is equal to a perpendicular component of a magnetic field, which we will explain in just a moment, multiplied by the length of the bar times its speed. To understand why there even is an induced EMF, we simply have to note that as the bar slides down the incline, the area of this loop of wire is increasing. Anytime the area of a loop of wire is increasing in the presence of a magnetic field, there will be an induced EMF equivalent to this expression. If we consider the following picture and recall that the magnetic field is pointing straight down and that the angle to the vertical is marked theta, which is the same theta as in the diagram, we can see that the component that's perpendicular to the loop of wire is represented as this component right here. Now that component would simply be B cosine theta since it is the adjacent part of this right triangle and adjacent corresponds to cosine. So we're going to replace this B perpendicular with B times the cosine of theta, again according to this diagram. Just make sure you understand that the component we're looking for is the component of the magnetic field that is perpendicular to the loop. In essence, and I know it's hard to see this, it's perpendicular to the incline itself. So this angle right here is 90 degrees. So it's only this component that will produce the induced EMF. So we've written the induced EMF by making that substitution. We will next need to note that because of this induced EMF, there will be an induced current in the circuit formed by this closed loop right here. What we need to figure out is the direction of that induced current. And we're going to try to prove to ourselves that this induced current is actually going in a counterclockwise fashion as I'm showing in the diagram. How do we know it's counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise? Well, as the bar slides down the ramp, we can see that the loop would be opening up in terms of its area. There's a magnetic field pointing down. And so what that means is that as this loop opens up with the bar sliding down and the magnetic field pointing downward as well, there will be an increasing magnetic flux. In response to that increasing magnetic flux, there has to be an induced magnetic field that's going to be pointing upward. Well, according to right-hand rule two, if we point our thumb in the direction of counterclockwise, and our fingers would be pointing upward in the direction of that induced magnetic field, we could then see that the current, which is where our thumb is pointing, is indeed necessarily in a counterclockwise direction. A little bit difficult to explain and draw, frankly. You might want to rewind the video and just make sure you listen to that again and that it makes sense. But indeed, this current will be going in a counterclockwise fashion so that our four fingers will be pointing up in order to produce an induced magnetic field that is opposing the downward directed magnetic field. And so now that we've established the direction of the current, we just need to imagine next that we're looking end on into the rod here. And because of the direction of the current, we would see that the current looking that way would be traveling in this direction. And so we're going to show a drawing from the perspective of this eyeball looking straight into the bar. And so here is that drawing. This rectangle, of course, is the bar. Again, from this vantage point, we should see that the current would be traveling into the page, and that is denoted by this cross. Now, if we refer to right-hand rule number one, and point our thumb into the page in the direction of the current, our four fingers would be pointing down in the direction of that magnetic field. We should see that our palm would be pointing to the left. Well, that direction of the palm is the direction of the magnetic force acting on the rod. So please pause the video and take your right hand keeping it flat, point your thumb into the page and your fingers pointing downward, 
In that case, your palm should be pointing to the left, and that indeed indicates the direction of this magnetic force acting on the bar. Now, we know from a prior chapter that the magnetic force acting on a current carrying bar would equal the current times the length of the bar times the strength of the magnetic field. Furthermore, we know that current can be derived from the expression I, or current, equaling the EMF divided by the resistance. So we're going to substitute the expression E over R, or epsilon over R, I should say, for the current I. But let us not forget that the EMF in this scenario was derived earlier, and we have this expression. So we're going to take that expression for the EMF and plug it into where we see this epsilon right here. And if we look carefully, we have b multiplied by b, which can become b squared, and then l times l will become l squared. So we're going to simplify this expression. Now, we're going to hold on to this expression and then refer next back to this free body diagram of the bar. Notice, by the way, that we just attached a subscript of m to that force to remind ourselves that it is the magnetic force that's shown in this diagram. Now, because the bar is in equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero, as is the sum of the forces in the y direction. For the y direction, we can see that one force acting is mg straight downward, and then we can see that the component of the normal force that's projecting along the y-axis is also a force acting in the y direction. That component is adjacent to this angle, so we can denote it as n times the cosine of the angle. So we've included those two y-direction forces in the diagram. Note that mg has a minus sign next to it because it's pointing downward. Let's add that mg over to the right-hand side. And then we have this result. Next, turning to the sum of the forces in the x-direction, we can see that we have fm, that magnetic force pointing to the left, and then we also have this component of the normal force pointing to the right. Now that component is opposite from the angle theta, so we know that we can denote it as n times the sine of the angle theta. And then we can go ahead and add the fm over to the right hand side. Notice that we had originally put a negative sign in front of it because it was pointing to the left, but let's go ahead and add it over to the right. So now we have two equations derived from Newton's second law. We're going to make a couple of substitutions here in order to get to what we want, which remember is the speed v. Remember, the magnetic force was given by this expression right here, so we're going to substitute it in for fm. We can also come up with an expression for the normal force n by referring to this equation here. If we divide that equation on both sides by cosine of theta, we can see that the normal force is equal to mg over cosine theta. So we're going to take that expression for n and substitute it into this equation over here. Finally, we're going to solve this equation for v. We can do that by first noting that sine over cosine is tangent. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by r. And then finally, divide both sides of the equation by b squared l squared cosine theta. And then we'll plug in the known values. Notice that the mass was given in a standard unit, the length also in a standard unit, the resistance is given, the angle is given, and the magnetic field, and then finally g is 9.8, so we'll plug everything in. And when you process that all, you should get roughly 2.8 meters per second as the correct value for the speed of the rod, or the bar, as it slides down the incline. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember that you can stay tuned and also send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.